So today we are going to be talking about fractions and decimals and how they relate to each other. We do have some vocabulary in this lesson. Uh, we have a terminating decimal. So a terminating decimal is when you're doing long division, uh, if the division ends when the remainder is zero. So for example, um, if we have, if we're going through the division and we end up with 0.25. There aren't any numbers after the 5, so we're stating that this is a terminating decimal. This is all that there is. It's 0.25. There are no numbers after the 5. Now, a repeating decimal. A repeating decimal is when we're doing long division, and if the, div if the digits, if they start repeating without an end in division. So, for example, if we have, um, if we have point three 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 and you see this on your calculator at times if the threes just keep on going this is called the repeating decimal this could also be written as point three with the bar over top of it this bar over top of it means that the three is constantly is just continuously repeating and it does not stop Alright, to make this chapter exponentially easier, I highly recommend memorizing all of these fraction to decimal equivalents. Um, I'm going to group together a couple of, four of them for you right now, which uh, might make a little bit more sense. So I'm going to couple one-half, one-fourth, and three-fourths together for you. Think of this like quarters in a dollar. How many quarters are in one dollar? There are four quarters in a dollar. So if we think of this as one fourth, if the, there are four quarters in one dollar, each quarter is equal to 25 cents. Three quarters in a dollar is equal to 75 cents. If you take a half of a dollar, it's equal to 50 cents. So I'll also a uh, couple together let's see here couple together this one-fifth two-fifths three-fifths and four-fifths let's look at the pattern that goes with uh, these four uh, fractions and decimals so if one-fifth goes point two two-fifths point four three-fifths point six four-fifths, point eight. Then let's look at one-third and two-thirds. So if we have one-third of something, <clears throat> it is point three with the repeating decimal. So it's point three, 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 three. And if we look at two-thirds, this means that we have two-thirds of a whole, so it would be, instead of 0.3 repeating, we have 0.6 repeating, so it would be 0.6666 continuing. Now these two up here, if we have one-tenth and one one-hundredth, this is, if we look at the one-tenth, this is the tenths place. And if we look at the one one-hundredth, this is the hundredths place. So this is how the one-tenths and the one-hundredths uh, can be grouped together. Alright, so we are going to write a fraction as a terminating decimal. So we have this fraction, seven-eighths, and what we're going to use is long division to figure out what the terminating decimal is. So if we have seven-eighths and we start using the long division. So we have our house, and inside the house goes the 7. Whatever the numerator is, the, it goes inside of the house. That's called the dividend. Now on the outside of the house is the 8. That is called the divisor. So, we to complete long division, uh, how many times does 8 go into 7? It doesn't, so you have to put a 0. Remember, you bring the, put the decimal, bring it all the way up, add the 0. So how many times does 8 go into 70? 
8 times. So 8 times 8 is 64. 70 minus 64 is 6. So you add the 0. Bring the 0 down. So how many times does 8 go into 60? 7 times. So 7 times 8 is 56. Subtract those. So 8 doesn't go into 4. You have to add another 0. So how many times does 8 go into 40? That's 5. So 40 minus 40 is 0. Long division always ends when it ends in a 0. So our answer is 0.875 or 875 thousandths is the terminating decimal. It's called the terminating decimal because there aren't any other numbers after this 5. It all it just ends at 0. Alright, so now it's your turn. What I want you to do is to pause the video, try this one, uh, create the, the terminating decimal, unpause the video when you're ready to see what I have done. Okay, so remember we're going to set up long division. So we have our house. Inside the house goes the numerator, or the top one. On the bottom is, or the denominator goes on the outside. So how many times does 4 go into 3? It doesn't, so you have to add the decimal. The decimal goes straight up. Add the 0. How many times does 4 go into 30? That's 7. So 7 times 4 is 28. Subtract those. 30 times 28 is 2. Bring down a 0. How many times does 4 go into 20? 5 times. So that is 0. So our final answer is 0.75 or 75 hundredths. This should be a very simple one for you to do because this is one that I really want you to memorize. 30, the 3 fourths is equal to 0.75 or 75 hundredths. So now what we're going to be doing, we're going to be using long division again and we're going to be writing it as a repeating decimal. So we're going to use long division. Let's set up our house again. The numerator goes on the inside, denominator goes on the outside. So how many times does 6 go into 5? It does not. So we have to add our decimal and our 0. So how many times does 6 go into 50? That's 8. So 6 times 8 is 48. Subtract those. We have 2. So bring down another 0. How many times does 6 go into 20? And that is 3 times. 6 times 3 is 18. Subtract that. We got a 2. Add a 0. Bring the 0 down. How many times does 6 go into 20? 3. 18, subtract it, 2, add a 0, 0, 3, 18, 2. Then you start seeing a pattern. We have 20 minus 18, 20 minus 18, 20 minus 18. It's going to be continuous. It's going to repeat every single time. So it'll be 0.8333333 and it just continues on. This can be written as... 0.83 with the bar over top. This is called bar notation. So whenever you have a 0.83 with the three with the bar over top of the three, this means that it is 0.83333 and the three repeats the whole time. So five six written as a as a repeated decimal is 0.83 with the three repeating. Now I want you guys to try it. Pause the video and unpause the video when you want to see the way that I have done it. Alright, so we're using long division again. We set up our house. We have two on the inside, three on the outside. So how many times is three going to two? It does not. There's nothing, so you have to add that zero. How many times is three going to twenty? Six times. So you have eighteen. Subtract that. It's 2, 0, 0. How many times is 3 going to 20? 6 times, 18. Subtract it. 
bring it down to zero. We're starting to see a pattern. 18, 2, dot 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 continue continue and it's going to be point six 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 repeating this whole time so if you want to rewrite it you could write it as point six with the bar over top of it that's bar notation again so we have two-thirds is equal to point six repeating this is one of those that you need to memorize so two-thirds is point six repeating all right, so we're going to be comparing both fractions and decimals. So let's look at our first one. We have one fourth, and we have two tenths. Um, we know that it's kind of hard just to start looking at it. If we have a fraction and we have a decimal, it's hard to compare. So what we could do is we know how to put one fourth into a decimal, and it's easier to compare a decimal to a decimal. So let's try to put one fourth into a decimal. So if we have one fourth, if we have our house, on the inside goes the one, outside goes the four. So how many times is four going to one? It doesn't. So let's add a decimal. How many times is four going to ten? Twice. That's eight. Subtract those. We have two. How many times is four going to twenty? Five times. So, 20 minus 20 is 0. So, 1 fourth is the exact same thing as 0.25. So, which one is greater? Uh, 25 hundredths or 2 tenths? Remember, we could write this 2 tenths as 20 hundredths. So, which one's, which one's greater? Do we have uh, 25 hundredths? or twenty hundredths. If you want to think of it as money, which one's greater? Twenty-five cents, twenty cents. Answer, twenty-five cents. So let's look at the second one. We have three-fourths and seven-ninths. Uh, this one is going to be, take a little bit more work, but let's remember I told you to memorize certain ones. Three-fourths. What is three-fourths as a decimal? That is 0.75. Now let's look at 7 ninths. If we have 7 ninths, the 7, let's make our house. 7 goes on the inside, 9 goes on the outside. How many times does 9 go into 7? It doesn't, so add a 0. How many times does 9 go into 70? That is 7 times. So 9 times 7 is 63. Subtract those. It's 7. So add the 0. How many times does 9 go into 70? That's 7 times. It's 63. If we subtract it, it still comes up 7. If we start seeing a pattern, 70 minus 63. 70 minus 63. This is again going to be 70 minus 63. So it just continues. So it would be 0.77 dot 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 or 0.7 repeating. So if we have 0.77 repeating, which one's greater? 75 cents, 77 cents. 77 cents is greater, thus 7 ninths is greater than 3 fourths. Alright, so what I want you to do now is to pause the video and try these two to see to figure out uh, which one is larger. Unpause the video when you want to see the way that I've done it. Alright, so now I have, let's look at the first one. I have 1 half and I have 67 hundredths. This should be pretty easy because this 1 half you should know how to write this as a decimal. This is one that, I, that you should memorize. So you would write it, write one half, as 0 0.50. So which one is larger? 50 cents or 67 cents? That's the way that I like to think of it. 
50, hun 50 hundredths or 67 hundredths? 67 hundredths are larger. Alright, so let's look at the second one. We have a negative 21 hundredths and 1 fifth. First off, let's think about this. Just think. This is a negative number. This is a positive number. Which one is going to be greater? The negative or the positive? The positive is always going to be greater. But if you don't think of it that way, let's think of it like this. What is one-fifth? How do you write that as a decimal? You write that as point two zero. So, which one is larger? A negative twenty-one hundredths or twenty hundredths? The answer is twenty hundredths.